Hello, I'm Alan. I'm a tutor at GCC, and I would like to talk about stress management. Stress is our response to anything that requires psychological, cognitive, or behavioral adaptation. That can be things like starting a new job or studying for finals. And there are a lot of different ways we can try to cope with stress. Two categories are problem-focused coping, meeting with a peer tutor that tries to help manage the external stressor, like working with deadlines. And there's emotion-focused coping, like talking with a friend or counselor that more tries to ease our negative feelings around the stressor. College can be very stressful, and that's a perfectly natural response to anything that we perceive to be a threat or a difficulty. And those feelings are okay, no matter what they are. Deadlines, fear of failure, and all the things that make school stressful can make anyone anxious. Some of those stressors are fear of failure or feeling like you're being judged, deadlines, time constraints, and then conflicting priorities or obligations, like needing to divide your time between school and work and family, and also perfectionism and holding yourself to unrealistic standards can be very stressful. Now, if you're like any of these dogs and hiding in a blanket and screaming doesn't help with your stress, here are some other stress management strategies you can try. My four main pieces of advice are to prioritize and set boundaries, do your best to keep things in perspective, let good enough really be good enough. Try to avoid perfectionism. Remember that doing your best is all you can do. And to take action to manage stress. And I'll give some strategies and advice you can try to use to do that. The little duck says, don't give up. You can do this. I believe in you. So... To prioritize and set boundaries, when you're working on school, you can consider the time and effort required for each assignment. Compare that to the percent of your overall grade to see how important that assignment is compared to others, and consider how important that one class is to others, and try to think about what's really important to you in your life, even outside of school. And try to set concrete boundaries about what you're willing and able to do for yourself and others. And that includes learning to say no when necessary, which can be very difficult for some of us. And give yourself permission to let some things slide occasionally, even if it means putting other things above schoolwork. You know, the night before a test, it might be more important to get a good night's sleep than study for the test. And Try to enjoy the little things. This is my dog Landon. Very good at that. Another important piece of advice is to try to keep things in perspective. Like thinking about the big picture when there's a class or an assignment that's really stressing you out. Try to think about how much it really matters in the long run. Try to look ahead to the future, think about how much you're going to care about or even remember that assignment in a year or in 20 years. And stressful situations and events can be seen as opportunities to learn and grow. That's a perspective that can be difficult to take, but it can really change how you feel about things. And it's also very important to be able to break down larger tasks into smaller ones, like making this slideshow and recording the presentation. That's a lot of little pieces I had to put together, from getting help with people to figure out what font to use, to finding what program to use to record it. It was a very large task, but I was able to break it down and I'm almost done with it. And I made these puzzle pieces to try to demonstrate how to put things in perspective. If you think about this symbol as one assignment that's really stressing you out, 
that's only one part of the class it's in. And that class is only one part of your school right now. There's a lot of other different pieces, including you know, all of your other classes. And that assignment is one part of one class. That's one part of your school. And school is only one part of your whole life right now. You've got a lot of other things going on. Friends and family and work and all of that. And looking at the even bigger picture of your whole lifetime, you know, this class is only a very, very small part of your life. So looking at the whole grand scheme of things can sometimes help reduce the stress of one situation. But also, a lot of this advice is trying to minimize a stressful situation, but that's not meant to downplay or invalidate your feelings. Like, your feelings and your stress about something is real, regardless of how big a deal the situation is or is not. It can be difficult, but it's important to try to avoid perfectionism. And you need to sometimes let good enough really be good enough. It's trying to be perfect at everything makes it impossible to really do as well as you could at everything. You know, there are so many things we want to do and need to do in life. It's not possible for everything to be a masterpiece or perfect. And getting started can be the hardest part, especially when you feel like there's a lot of pressure to make something perfect. It's sometimes scary to even try. So if there's 100 pages you need to read, Maybe give yourself permission to just read one of them. Worst case scenario, you read one page, which is better than none. But I often find that just starting really builds momentum so I can keep going. I always find that thinking about doing schoolwork is always more painful than actually doing it. So, you know, as stressful as it is to think about doing the work, you often are much less stressed out while you're doing it, and especially after you've done it. But doing something's always better than nothing. And even outside of school, if you have a sink full of dishes to wash, give yourself permission to go wash just a few of them. Either that gets the ball rolling and you wash all of them, or you have at least a few less to do after. And just... As long as you're doing your best, there's nothing more that you can do. And that's always good enough. Just remember, everything's going to be okay. My last piece of advice is to take action and try to use some different stress management techniques and strategies. One important thing is to actually reach out and try to access available resources and support services. And for me, trying to practice things like mindfulness or breathing exercises can be very helpful for stress. I find that when I'm stressed out, I take really shallow breaths, get really tense, and just taking a few minutes to remember to breathe can be very helpful for reducing my stress. And just doing something you love can really reduce your stress. When we have so many obligations, we'll often get out of the habit of doing things we love doing. You know, art, baking, anything like that. So it's important to try to make the time to do those things. And just physical activity can be very helpful for reducing stress. Taking a walk, yoga, swimming, anything. And just remembering to do self-care. That can include, you know, making sure you sleep enough or eat well. Remember to drink water. And not being afraid to ask for help is very important, but very hard for a lot of people. I find that a lot of the time, the more you need help, the harder it is to reach out and try to get it. So, try to be proactive and manage your stress before it really 
becomes overwhelming. And just talking to someone can be very helpful. But there's a lot of different strategies you can use. I am still in the process of finding what works best for me, so it's a long process. But don't give up. Remember to get enough sleep. Very important. And one of the most important strategies that I already touched on is to talk about it when things are stressful. There's lots of people out there who will be happy to listen. Friends and family and even people you don't know as well, peers, classmates. Everybody experiences stress from time to time. So even if the things causing the stress are different, the feelings are pretty much universal. So it can be helpful talking to people so you'll feel less alone. And if you're really struggling or feeling unsafe, please reach out for help, either to a friend or a professional. And this tiny turtle is always there for you if you need to talk. I actually found this fellow at GCC by the pond years ago. And please note, this is not professional advice. These are just tips I've accumulated over the years from my own experience with anxiety and as a student when you're talking to peers and doing my own research. It's a picture of me and Landon, busy being amateurs. And there are quite a number of very valuable resources on the GC campus. There are free and available to all students. There's the Wellness Center where they have counseling and disability services. It's the Women's Resource Center that's open to all students regardless of gender. The Fitness Center. There's the Food Pantry and the Veterans Center. And there's peer tutoring. So a lot of this advice I've given much easier said than done. It can take a long time and a lot of effort. And peer tutoring could help with a lot of that. We can help with the content of your course, you know, going over how to do math or help with writing essays, but we can also help with a lot of these things like time management, study skills, test taking strategies, that kind of thing. And thank you so much for watching. I hope some of this has been helpful. Bye.